Hi there, my name is Kai Vierda and I'm a product manager for CA Release Automation. Welcome to this five part series of training videos for the Rapid Development Kit or RDK. In this third part, we'll look at the CLI and script action types. In this module, we'll have a closer look at the CLI and script action types. Let's start with the action name. The best practice for the action name is to start with an abbreviated version of the product name. So in this case, let's do RDK, followed by a verb noun construct. So examples of this is create ticket, update ticket, delete ticket, etc. So what we can do is run commands. This way, the release automation user can easily tell for which product this action is and also which type of function the action provides. Description. Try to be as explicit as possible. Think of the description fields as a way to explain everything there is to know about the action without forcing the user to go through the product documentation. The action category field. By default, all the actions are part of the primary category as defined in the action pack properties. The action category enables you to put this action to a subcategory, which is useful for action packs that have many actions and require proper grouping of actions. Let's look at the input parameters. The input parameters provide all the configuration required for the action, such as the server to connect to, login credentials, etc. And parameters are simply added by typing a name and hitting the plus button. Once added, you can choose a type, default is string, but other types are available, and also set various options, such as the required flag and of course a description. Again, try to be very explicit here. Now that we've added a single parameter, let's look at the command line itself. The CLI action type enables you to provide a Windows or Linux specific command. For both, the default interpreter will be used, which is cmd.exe for Windows and bash on Linux. Since I'm running RDK on Windows, we'll focus on the Windows command line. The default execution path is set to the Windows temporary directory and note how the input parameter that we defined earlier is available here for easy mapping of the parameter as arguments to the command. As an example, I can use the echo command, simply drag the message input parameter to the command field, and now I have mapped my input parameter as arguments to my command. From RDK, we can execute, provide a value, click the execute button, and now we can see the results of the command execution. We have the standard out, the standard error, and the exit code. And these three outputs are all made available by out-of-the-box output parameters. We have the execution output, the error output, and the exit code. And you can provide additional output parameters where the output parameter subscribes to a specific source. And you can use either regular expression, XPath, or JSON path to filter out the exact information you need and assign it as an output parameter. For example, if I change the command to ipconfig and hit execute, this is the output I get. Let's imagine I'm interested in the first IP address that matches. What I can do is add an output parameter called IP address, add is of type string, I'll skip the description for now, source is standard out, filter type is regular expression, if I paste in a regular expression, you notice that the RDK actually highlights the matches in the standard out in this case, so it validates that the regular expression works for me. And you know, if I continue to do this, I can easily define new output parameters and filter out uh, the exact data from standard out as I want. The CLI action type can also be used to execute scripts. However, when calling scripts that are not associated to the default interpreter, cmd.exe in this case, 
you have to make an explicit call to the script interpreter, just like you would do from the command line itself. For example, to run PowerShell from the command line, I would type PowerShell, then minus file, and then point to the path where my PowerShell file is located. And then, as this script takes a single argument, I would enter my argument here. Hello world. And hit enter. So my PowerShell script echoes back uh, the argument that I provided. Hello world. So this works. So let's do the same from RDK. To run a script, you can upload an existing script. And the script can now be referenced by this special uh, parameter. So now I can complete it with the command PowerShell minus file. This then calls script. And then I have to provide my argument, which in my case is the message. So now I combine the script reference with an input parameter. And we can run this. Hit execute. As you can see, the uh, PowerShell script executed fine. The same methodology works for other script types. So whether you have VBScript, uh, Python, etc. As long as you explicitly call the interpreter, upload the script file, and call the script, and provide the uh, parameter as arguments to the command, just like you would on the command line itself, uh, you can run any script type uh, you like via RDK. Now let's move down to results. By default, when release automation has finished executing an action and the execution was successful, it will produce this default success message. Now you can change the success message and reuse any of the available input parameters. You can also use output parameters, but you have to manually type the reference to the output parameter in the 1.0 version of RDK. But be aware that you can say execution succeeded, uh, comma, and then the input was displayed. You can make uh, these combinations easily. Then in addition, you can also specify error conditions. So the use case for this is, let's say that based on a specific rule, you would want the action to fail. Then you can take any of the output parameters also the ones you have defined uh, in addition to the standard ones and choose an operator so you can either run a regular expression or you can do um, comparisons etc and say if execution output equals a certain value then you can specify an additional error message and again use any of the available input parameters by using drag and drop or uh, manually enter any of the output parameters and you can add multiple conditions. So then what is the difference between the CLI and script action types? Although they are largely the same, there are two fundamental differences. First off, a CLI action type executes both commands and script and assumes the script that you call accepts command line arguments. The script action executes a script directly against the OS default interpreter, be it cmd.exe or bash, or PowerShell, which of course is only supported on Windows. And it enables you to provide an inline script and to perform inline variable substitution. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out part 4 of this series where we cover the RESTful action.